welcome to this week's piece is. <laughs> so I have these two nightstands. Anytime I can find a set of nightstands for a reasonable price, I swoop them up because it's hard to find matching sets in my area. Um, so these were in pretty rough shape, but there were two of them and they went together. So I got them anyways. And you guys know I'm not afraid of a, a little bit of work. So they have lifting and missing veneer. That's no big deal. We could totally fix that. Um, they had been sprayed with spray paint. Again, no big deal. The tops were laminate, so it obviously came off. My inspiration for these is this wallpaper, and I went ahead and chose colors from the wallpaper to create these pieces. And then to get started with the repairs, I'm going to be using my hide glue, but my shop is freezing, so as you can see, I had my heat gun pointed at it to warm it up a bit. This hide glue in particular is my favorite because it doesn't need to be warmed up in a pot and used that way, unless your shop is a super warm 55 degrees and then it doesn't like to work <laughs> so I had to heat it up with the heat gun to get it moving again. Um, in the summertime this works beautifully and you obviously don't have to do that <laughs> but for now this is this is where I'm at this is what I needed to do. I really like using high glue to put down veneer because it's just such a thin it, and it's really really easy to clean up I just I love it for this. So I'm getting it in there smushing it all down making sure I get it underneath all of the pieces and then I'm just going to clamp this up and we will worry about filling and everything later. As you can see, I have my little baby wipes on hand because this stuff does just wipes up. It wipes up so easily with baby wipes. So that's all I'm doing here because you want it all cleaned up before you clamp down or else you're just going to have a huge mess to clean up later after it dries. A little bit of a mess with this isn't that big of a deal, but nobody wants to keep scrubbing. There were some parts in this that I just couldn't get under with my fingers, so I busted out the glue syringe and just injected glue whenever, wherever I needed it in any of the smaller areas. Um, that's super easy to do too, but then you have to clean up a syringe, so you choose your battles here. Today I decided that it would be fine to clean up a glue syringe. And I'm just going to set this plastic bag down between the veneer and the board that I'm going to be clamping down to it. This is just to keep the board from being glued to it. Um, a lot of times I use wax paper. That works great too. This one was just right next to me, so this is what I used. Um, doing a board like this helps provide even pressure and make a... You're going to get a little bit more of a flush surface when you're finished because there's so many different strips of veneer coming up. So. It's just safer to not do individual clamps. And then I went through with my wood filler and filled in any little spots that I could find that really needed it. There were some um, just holes in the side randomly. I'm sure that they had hooks or something like that on there at some point in time. You just never know, but they got filled because they served no purpose. I let all of that dry overnight and then I can come back in the next day. Everything's cured and I don't have to worry about anything. And I can fill in now all of this area with the missing veneer with the wood filler. So you can use any type of wood filler here. It's down at the bottom. It's not going to get a lot of wear and tear. And I also ended up raising these up off the ground. You'll see that later. That way that there's less of a chance of the bottom getting damaged from hitting the floor. So Again, any type of wood filler. This one I love just because it's a giant vat of it and I've had it forever and I just keep it stored in a plastic bag so it doesn't dry out, but it's quick, it's easy, and it does the job. So to prep these for paint, because they were done in spray paint and that stuff can't be trusted over laminate and things like, and it was just old, you could see it was coming up everywhere. So 
I'm giving the entire piece of scuff sand, getting off any of the paint that was going to come off anyways. Um, and then also, while I'm sanding, I will also sand down all of the wood filler that we have everywhere to make sure that we just have a nice, good surface to paint over. And then of course we're going to be priming with my 123 primer in gray. Always, I always use the gray. You can use white if you want, I won't judge you. Just the gray is my favorite, because it's the best. Then of course I will remove the dust um, and give these a quick clean. So I'm just using my vacuum real quick and then I will take my chalk mountain cleaner and make sure I have everything removed before I start priming. So these backer boards were actually chipboard, which I do not agree with, um, but they were still in relatively good shape considering what they're made out of. Um, I just, I hate the material. It, if it gets any amount of moisture on it whatsoever, it will swell and get icky. So what I did here instead of replacing them, because like I said, they, they were in good shape. There was no bubbling or cracking or anything, but I just, I don't trust them. So this will be one of the few times that you'll see me do the back of a piece. So I'm gonna go around, take everything off. And since I'm going to be decoupaging that paper on the back anyways, so that you can see it through the front side, I'm also going to prime the back of it because again, I just don't think this stuff can be trusted. And I'm trying to be oh so careful removing these nails out of the back because it will just rip it to shreds if you're not careful pulling it apart. So. This took me a hot minute to get this off because I was just trying to be careful because of the type of material it is. If this was just a wooden backer like normally is on the back, it would have been so much easier to get off. Since I'll be painting the insides of these, I'm also going to take off the doors for the prime coat and the first coat, just because it'll be easier for me to get around and everything and not have to worry about the doors being on there and moving them back and forth. So just removing those really quickly. All right, so I'm going to get the backboards going now because I want them to be drying and ready to go for when I'm ready to put them on so that I can get these going, let them be drying while I start painting the pieces. This is the easiest way to put papers on the backboard. Now this is really, really thick, heavy duty wallpapered. It, it is pre-pasted, it is not a peel and stick. This is my favorite kind to use. I'm not the biggest fan of peel and stick. It does have its place. I do use it, but this is my favorite. So it's very durable and way, way easier to, to apply. Um, so I use it with my Chalk Mountain Satin Poly. That's how I apply it. If you want to use wallpaper paste, you can totally do that too. Um, you just make sure that you do a thicker layer of the poly and you might have to go around the edges once it dries because the edges want to pull up. Um, but once you do it the second time just to hit the edges, if they didn't stick down, they won't come up. You're going to be totally fine. So I'm just putting a thick layer on. I make sure that the wallpaper is 
wider around the edge because this is a really easy thing to trim off with a sharp blade. So I just let it be slightly larger than the piece that I need and I'll let it sit on there, let it dry on there. And then once it's dry, I can just trim off the excess. And you guys, this is the, like, you can smooth everything out with your hands. If you want to, you can use a brayer. I have all the tools and I know a lot of you say like, oh, you should use saran wrap. You should use all the stuff. I have all the stuff to use. I almost always go back to using my hands or my fingers just because they're what God gave me. They work the best and I just always go back. So I tried using the brayer on this first one. I was like, oh, it'll get a really, and I'm like, no, just my hands. And then I used my hands for the second one as well because hands are great. And like I said, I'm just priming the back of this because I don't like the material that it is and it will just keep it safer and it'll make me feel better selling this piece. And now while the backboard's doing its thing, I can prime the rest of the piece and get it going. I do really like having two things to work on at once because while one's drying, you can kind of be working on the other one and switch everything around. So it's nice to work in stages like that. Um, I typically use this small roller. It's just a little foam roller. And then I will also have a chip brush in there to get around any areas that the roller doesn't hit. And that's essentially my go-to. I keep this stuff in the same tray all the time and I just keep it in a very large Ziploc bag and I spray it with water before I leave it and I just kind of add more primer as I go per each piece um, and then you know I throw out the roller when it starts getting too messed up but yeah usually I just keep it in the tray keep it moist inside there and inside a plastic bag and it lasts for forever okay not forever but you know what I mean I had to show you guys this because it was so gross. So these were just the little pegs on the bottom. Um, it, they only had a, one, only had one of these and the other one had like two. So they had to go and I had to put in some new ones. And also these ones weren't tall enough to keep the bottom safe from touching the floor. So I was removing this one and wow, you could tell that this thing had had some water damage because it is just all kinds of gross inside. But these are kind of a pain because they're so buried deep and they've got these three little points that shoot down into the wood. And so they're a little difficult to remove. And this one especially so, because yeah, that was gross, like metal just falling apart on the inside. Good times. Um, so then I just, I keep these in my shop. I buy just bags of them off of Amazon. You tap them into the bottom and they have little felt pads so people can slide them around their house without, you know, damaging their floors and it gives them a little bit of height. So these are cool things to have. I wouldn't put them on every piece, but I think some pieces call for it. So you just kind of have to choose what you think would work best. We're moving around again. Now that the primer on the bodies are drying, this was dry enough to go through and cut the papers off. So I take my blade and I run it along the edge of the backer board there, and I will do it at almost a 45 degree angle to prevent any lifting around the edges because you don't want your paper hanging too much off the edge. Um, on these backer boards, it's not terribly important to have a little hanging off because they're going to be nailed back onto the back. Um, but some pieces you'll want to make sure you have like a super, super clean edge because like drawers and things, you don't want them to hit and bump. So this is the base color I'm using for the entire piece. This is going to be kind of one of those old world blends that I do that you guys know I think are so, so easy and incredibly beginner friendly. But for this one, they're all kind of these muted, just lovely colors that go together and look really, really good with the wallpaper because they were chosen from the wallpaper. So this is kind of the overall color that I want. 
So this is the base color that I'm using and the entire thing is going to get this color. And I mean everything. So inside, outside, the back, all of it, this color. So the screws that I pulled out of one of the nightstands had a bit of rust on them, so I'm actually going to take a little WD-40 and clean them up. Uh, this looks like a really terrible job that I'm doing because I was trying to do it to where you could see it on camera. But I went through and did a better job where I could actually hold them and get them really cleaned up. Also, this was the plastic bristle brush. Um, I would recommend the one of the metal ones. These are just the little three-pack cleaning brushes that I get at the dollar store. But I wanted them cleaned up before I put them back in the piece. Um, I like to use the same hardware and screws and everything because these older, like any of the antique or vintage pieces, they are kind of set in their ways and you want to put the same things that were in there back in there. It'll just save you heartaches when your stuff isn't fitting properly by doing something new. That's not always the case, but a lot of the times it is. So I chose to use my staple gun for this because one, this material is very light weight. It couldn't withstand my airstrike. So I just did the stapler and it worked out perfectly, went right in and it was super secure. And like I said, I actually painted the back of this piece, which I don't typically do. Um, backs, usually, if they're not meant to be seen, if there's something that goes against a wall, on older pieces, they'll a lot of times have a lot of information back there that you can research the piece with. And so I just, I never want to cover that up. And I always leave it to where if somebody ever wanted to, they could get it back to its original finish and kind of research the piece and do what they feel like they want to do to it. So I think that's important. These were not antiques by any means, and there was no information, so, and like I said, the backer board was just not, it wasn't wood, so we're painting it. Okay, we're going to do the modeled kind of old world blend on this, and when you do these kinds of blends, you want to make sure that your base coat has been drying overnight. Now, you could wait up to, you know, eight hours, something like that, but you do want to make sure that your base coat is really, really dry because you're adding a lot of other paint and a lot of water, and that will reactivate your paint, so you don't want it to be a freshly done first coat. So my second coat, I'm just working in sections, and I'm adding the exact same color as I did for the first coat, but this is going to give me a wet base to then blend in the other colors. So the first color I'm going in with is my dark gray, which is Iron Gate. I almost always keep my darker colors at the bottom. That is not a rule, but it's something that I just kind of gravitate towards. If this is your piece and you want to put the brightest color down at the bottom, you do you. That's awesome. Uh, it's just whatever makes you happy. That's what you want to do. This is just kind of what makes me happy. So you don't have to follow along in this regard, but this is kind of how I am working this. So I have a brush for each color and then I have a clean blending brush that I'll keep cleaning off to blend out these colors. We want no definitive lines on this. These are just going to be the just most subtle you can get these colors to go in. To where when you look at the piece you can't see where one color kind of begins and another color ends. It's just when you look at it you see something. Just this weird crazy montage of colors but it's just so soft and lovely and blended I just I love 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 this look as you can see I just add water whenever I need to if the paint starts drying up I am working just the three sides and these are small sides so it's not hard to kind of keep it wet and keep it moving if this was a larger piece I would of course work in smaller sections on each side but I can do an entire side on one of these because they're small enough so as you can see, I put it on with the 
brush that is for that color and then I take my blending brush and I just blend it all the way out, no lines. You just want it so, so, so seamless. And this is super, super easy to do. You can add in a bunch of colors at once and then blend them out that way or you can work individually and blend them out that way. You just kind of get a feel for it as you go and just know that you're not going to mess this up. You just keep going, keep blending. You can add your base color again too if it starts looking like something that you don't want and you want to try over. You guys, it's just paint. You can totally paint over it if you hate it at the end. That's like the best part about this job is you can just start over if you have to. And sometimes that's discouraging, but for the most part, you can do a pretty quick fix. So you just kind of work with it until it is something that you're like, oh, okay. And then you'll also need to get to know your paints. Whatever paints that you're using, they will dry differently than what they look like wet. So some paints dry darker, some paints dry lighter. You just kind of, the more colors you use and the more textures and every, everything changes your paint. So the more you work with them, the more, more you'll get to know them when they're wet and know what they're going to look like once they dry. I'm just throwing this side in here because I just want to show you a different way to do the exact same thing. How I said that you could put all the colors on there at once and then blend them out, that's what this side's going to be. Just so that you can see you don't have to blend out a color individually, you can do all of them at once. So I start the same way, I add my second coat of my base color and then I literally just throw on all the colors in the placements that I want them and blend them out that way. And it gives me essentially the same exact look and I'm happy with it either way. And since we're going to do so many layers on this, there's no way for anybody to tell that you did one side differently than the other. I'd like to say that we're getting to the fun part now, but I think all of this is the fun part. So we're going to get to another fun part. This is my rose pewter um, that I just always have mixed up. It is several of the Chalk Mountain glazing dust mixed with their satin poly, and you use it to glaze your pieces. So as you can see, it's just this lovely, swirly mist of gorgeousness. And I'm going to make sure my piece is damp and then put it on, work in small sections, and then use one of the baby wipes to then dab it back. It's kind of ragging. It gives it just a little bit of texture and a subtle sheen, and it's just lovely. We're going to do this all over the entire piece, and again, you want to work in smaller sections. So the bonus of this, because it's done with the satin poly, is I'm actually sealing this as well. So this isn't a full seal. I wouldn't consider this one full layer it's fully protected and now it's ready to go but I just want you to keep in mind that when you do this you are kind of partially sealing your piece. The next layer we're doing is uh, a white metallic. It is kind of a like the inside of a seashell color 
Um, I'm doing the exact same thing, getting the piece wet. This is, of course, after the other layer has dried. You don't want to do this over wet. Um, and you're doing the same thing, working in small sections and dabbing it off again. Exact same process, but it's just giving a bunch more depth, dimension, and a little more subtle shimmer. And final coat is the actual sealing and also another layer of texture. So I'm using white wax. This is what I'm going to seal the entire piece with. I'm not worried about doing multiple coats of poly all over it, again, because I've already done two coats that already had poly in it. So it's mostly sealed. And then adding the wax will also give it that last layer of protection that it would need. This also helps marry all of the colors together and tones everything down so that it's not super shiny when you look at it. Not that it was, but it just tones it back a little bit more. And just all these layers of colors and different textures and, you know, satin and matte and metallic, all of these things going together, creating just the most amazing finish. It's just, it's so, so cool. So you're going to let this sit on and then, of course, wipe it back once your piece has absorbed as much wax as it's going to absorb. Oh, hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades, and we've got our finished nightstands. So these turned out super cute. They're very beginner friendly. If you're just learning how to blend, this is a great option to go for. Um, you just work in multiple layers, blend out very subtly, and then when you see these up close, you can totally see all the different variations in color and texture and different sheens because we have matte, metallic, satin, like all the things are going on in these. And so they're just super, super fun to see up close in person. And I know it's so hard to tell on camera, but I assure you they're awesome. And uh, yeah, they're very simple, but elegant and would fit into a number of different styles. So that's awesome for these. Yeah, but I hope you enjoyed these because I certainly did. Thank you guys so much. I think, hopefully, fingers crossed, by the time this video comes out, we will be at 6,000 because you guys are just incredibly amazing and wonderful, and I adore you. So thank you so much. I truly appreciate you. All right, let's get you some photos.